Welcome back, mathematicians. We are going to be solving linear equations today, and when we solve, we want to use our properties of equality, and we always want to do the opposite of what is written or what's happening. So, if we look at 1a, we always kind of want to think of our equation as two sides. So, remember our equations are made up of expressions with an equal sign between them. So we kind of want to think about them as two separate expressions. So our goal is to get n by itself, but right now n is being divided by 12. So the opposite of divide by 12 would be multiply by 12. So if we're going to multiply by 12, and I really want you to practice writing it in this way because the more complex problems get, um, the more important it is to be able to write your uh, solving equations in a vertical fashion. So if n is being divided by 12, the opposite of divide by 12 would be multiply by 12. So we're going to multiply the right side by 12. But right now, we're out of balance because we're multiplying the right side by 12, but we're not doing anything to the left side. So in order for it to remain balanced, we have to multiply by 12 on the left-hand side as well. And so when we take 12 times 5, it is 60, but let's go through the multiplication. 5 times 2 is 10, carry your 1, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 would be 60. So we have 60 over here. We still have our equal sign, and 12 divided by 12 cancels out. And that's our whole goal. That cancels out to 1. So we really have 1n. Let's put a little side note. Remember, mathematicians are lazy. So we just write n. But it's really important that it's we understand that it's 1n. It's not 0n's. There's 1 there. And since we have 1n, we have solved it. We know what 1n equals. 1n equals 60. We can always double check. So go ahead and write this down, and then I'm going to erase it. And that goes for all variables. So if it was x, that equals 1x. If it's y, that equals 1y. If it's k, that equals 1k. We can double check by substituting our value in and simplifying. So what we've been working on before Christmas, or not Christmas break, but before our semester break. So 5 equals 60 divided by 12. Well, 12 goes into 60 five times. And 5 equals 5. It's balanced. Yes. So this is the right answer. All right, let's take a look at number 2. So our equation is x minus 4 equals 3. So we want to stay balanced over that bar, over the equal sign. So right now, 4 is being subtracted from x. So the opposite of minus 4 would be plus 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Because remember, we have to keep it balanced. So anything you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I'm going to write off to the side the addition property of equality. So we can't just write it. We have to actually calculate what we have written, because when we actually calculate it, we can see if we've done it correctly. 
So we have nothing being added or subtracted to x, so we're going to bring x down. Negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. And there's no point in writing plus 0 because it's plus nothing. So we have x equals 3 plus 4 would be 7. So let's check it. We'll substitute x or 7 in for x. 7 minus 4 equals 3. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 equals 3. It's balanced. Yes. Right answer. Let's take a look at number 3. 4 equals 6v. And so remember, when you have something written like this, that means multiplication. Because again, mathematicians are lazy, so anytime we don't have to write something, we don't. So if our variable v is being multiplied to 6 right now, the opposite of multiply by 6 would be divide by 6. So I'm going to divide by 6. But right now I'm out of balance. I only have the right-hand side divided by 6, so I have to divide the left-hand side by 6. And when I do that, I get 4 sixths, which can be simplified to 2 thirds. So I have my equal sign. And 6 divided by 6 is 1, leaving me with 1v, or we can just write v. Now let's check it. Oh, I was doing so good. Let's check it. Substitute 2 thirds in for v. So we have 4 equals 6 times 2 thirds. And 6 times 2 thirds, 6 times 2 would be 12 over 3. And 3 goes into 12 4 times. And it's balanced. Therefore, we have the right answer. And I used the division property of equality. Sorry, I want you to write your the property that you use as well today on your assignment. So I want you to write the property. I want you to do the check step. And also circle your answer. All right, when you come back, we're going to do three more examples, and we're going to go through those examples really quick, I promise. So stay tuned. I know it's been a long day of videos. One more just to solidify what we're doing today.